Shalom family. Welcome to another teaching from Tail Ministries. This is your boy, Yakoba, uh, trying to get back into the game. Um, you know, I'm not 100% yet, but, you know, I thank you all who've been praying for me, uh, to, you know, for my health, and I pray that you continue to pray for my health. Um, this teaching here is called the Third Temple, Gentile versus Hebrew Israelite Perspective. Um, one thing I want to note is that, you know, here at Tail Ministries, we don't set dates for prophecy. Uh, we try to help you understand our view of prophecy. So, uh, the scriptures teach that there's going to be a 400 year captivity. And from our understanding, uh, we believe that the 400 years started in 1619 and ends in 2019. So does that mean anything going to happen, let's say, on August 28, 2019, when the first slaves arrived to America? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Uh, but the thing is this, right? Um, we must present it based upon our understanding. We're not saying it's going to happen we're not saying that the ex exodus let's say the second exodus is actually going to happen on august 20th 2019 but we must understand that the curses will be lifted august 20th 2019 i do expect to see changes in the spirit realm at least now hopefully the second exodus occurs right i mean because 400 years to me is 400 years not 401 and if the Most High meant 401, he would have said 401. So we must understand, uh, you know, here at Tail Ministries, we're teaching the full counsel of God. We're teaching our understanding of his word. And, you know, sometimes that includes a, a, a time frame, like the old captivity uh, of Daniel and him, uh, in Babylon. That was 70 years. This captivity was 400. So I say that just to clarify for some of you out there, you know, who may think we're date setting. We're not. We're just teaching. So uh, as I mentioned, this teaching is called the Third Temple. Gentile versus Hebrew Israelite perspective. And what I want to cover in this teaching is, you know, Tales view on the Third Temple. Because we hear a lot about the Third Temple. We hear a lot about the Noahide laws. And so we must understand that the Gentiles have their own made up fantasy world view of the end times, their own made up fantasy world view of what's going to happen with the third temple, what's going to happen with the Antichrist. And so uh, based upon knowing who the true people of the book is, who's the Negro, who's the descendants of slaves who were spread around around the world, uh, they are the true Hebrew Israelites. And this is what we're going to cover. <laughs> So let's get into this study, family. Gentile perspective of the third temple. According to most modern Christians, there will be a new world order with a rebuilt Jewish temple. They believe that the current state of Israel and the Chabad Lubavitch will rebuild the temple within the modern city of Jerusalem. They believe that the Antichrist, also known as the Jewish Messiah, will arrive once the temple is built. They believe that all who do not worship the false messiah will be beheaded. They believe that the Noahide laws are on the horizon and that this will be used to behead born again Christians. So, you know, us uh, who call ourselves Hebrew Israelites or the true uh, descendants of Jacob, uh, we are the true Hebrew Israelites. We are the true people of the book. We have, we, we have proven this. Okay, so, but this view that we're looking at is from the viewpoint of the Gentiles and the Gentiles believe uh, that the people in Israel right now are the true Hebrews or the true Jews. Now, uh, if they if the Gentiles were willing to look into it, they could see that even some of their own, you know, uh, Jewish rabbis and people of Jewish, what we call Jewish descent, even admit that the Negro is the true Hebrew Israelite of the Bible. So uh, this, remember, this is their perspective, and we're going to get into why I believe that their perspective is incorrect, why there will not be a third temple rebuilt soon, and what is truly next. 
So although we see some of this imagery in the book of Revelation, is this really going to happen soon? Is this something we should be concerned about? Personally, it could happen this way. What we are seeing could line up with Revelation 13. The hardest part for me is trying to figure out the timing of the book of Revelation, along with what we see in the Old Testament prophecies. However, I will try to show you why I believe that the introduction of the Antichrist happens after we are back in the land. I will also try to show you that we at Tail Ministries believe about the third temple and the Gog Magog War. So, family, I'm not going to get into the Gog Magog War in, in, in depth. That'll be another teaching. What I am focusing on right now is the third temple and why the third temple will not be rebuilt soon. Uh, even though the Chabad Lubavitch and, and, you know, Zionist Christians are looking forward to that rebuilt temple in Jerusalem, that's not going to happen. That's not the prophecies that's on the horizon, in my opinion. So, so the reason why I say that, um, it, personally, it could happen this way, and what we are seeing could line up with Revelation 13, is because some of the things that, that are happening is, in my opinion, being manipulated to look like Revelation 13. As we see within the news articles, we see, you know, in Sweden and other places, people actually taking the chip implant. We see the technology there for where no man can buy a trade or sell unless he has the market's name or the number of his name. We see uh, the fact that they're trying to, uh, at least according to uh, uh, the Shabbat, that they're trying to implement the Noahide laws around the world. So. The thing is, is this something we should be concerned about, like the Gentiles being concerned about this situation? And my point is that the temple is not going to be rebuilt right now, and it's not going to be rebuilt by them, okay? Because that is not the temple of Yah. And so some people say, well, our bodies are the temple of Christ. Yes, our bodies are, but there will be a physical temple in the future. So let's get into this, and you'll see why I say it. Why, why I am saying that there will be no rebuilt temple, even though they may try to rebuild a temple. And they may try to blow up the dome or, or whatever, like some people say, but I don't believe that there will be a rebuilt temple at all. At all. Not right now. In the future, yes. And you'll see the timing of this. So take note of the timing of, uh, of this rebuilt temple. Understand what's truly happening. So that, you know, that, you know, when the next teaching comes, you'll understand the sequence of events. So what the Gentiles believe is this, that there's going to be a great tribulation. The end comes at an unexpected time, the abomination of desolation where the Antichrist sits in a rebuilt temple. The prophecy of 70 weeks, watch our Daniel 9 video because our prophecy of 70 weeks is different from theirs. Then they state the rapture is going to happen, the second coming, last day counterfeits, the marriage supper of the Lamb, Armageddon, the millennial reign, Satan release, the last judgment, new heaven, new earth, and then a new Jerusalem. That's the sequence of events that they believe. Now, what we at Tao believe, we believe that the, you know, that the tribulation, the great tribulation has already occurred, has already started, and we're already in it. Because that started when Israel went into captivity as slaves around the world. Okay, now it's going to culminate in, in that whole battle of Armageddon, but it's not going to happen the way they want. Right now, the Gentiles see this final battle as a battle amongst just, you know, Gentile nations against this, this, this idea of uh, Israel who have been regathered in the land. So the people in the land right now are not the true Jews, okay, and we have proven that. Uh, so what you must understand is that if you don't understand who the true people of the book is, you will not be able to understand end time prophecy. So a third temple is not about to be rebuilt now. Okay. The Gentiles will try to use second Thessalonians chapter two, verses one through four to prove that the antichrist is near and that the temple is about to be constructed. 
Now, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 states, Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day shall not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. In other translation, that will say the son of perdition. He will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God or to be Yah. Okay, so what we must understand is there will be a temple. And there will be an Antichrist. And that Antichrist will sit in the temple. But it is not about to happen now. Okay? It's not about to happen now. And I'm going to show you why it's not about to happen now. Measure the temple. The Gentiles will also try to use Revelation 11 to show that there will be a new temple built as well. We agree that a new temple will be built. But the question is when? Antichrist in the temple. Without understanding the sequence of the biblical prophecies, one would think that the Antichrist is about to appear and that there will be a third temple rebuilt. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 gives us the warning that the Antichrist will sit in the temple and proclaim himself Yah or Elohim, more you know, more accurate, right? Proclaim himself God or Elohim. If the Antichrist is going to do this, then there must be a temple, right? So, so we know if there's a temple and the Antichrist is going to sit in the temple and claim to be God, then there must be a temple built in order for him to do this. So, so we're not arguing that there will not be a rebuilt temple. We're arguing that it's not going to happen now and it will not be built under the authority and power of the people who are in Israel right now. So, however, the temple is not rebuilt until after we come back in the land of Zion. So... Once we return to Israel, once we return to, let's say, Jerusalem or Mount Zion, that's when the temple is going to be rebuilt. Okay. Revelation 13 through 19 is hard to pin down in a sequence of events. However, we will show you why the temple will not be rebuilt yet. So my point is the temple will not be rebuilt now. Okay. And there will be no Noah Hyde laws globally. They are trying to. Don't get me wrong. They are trying to rebuild the temple, and they are trying to implement uh, the Noahide laws, but it will not work. It will not happen right now. Now, many Gentile prophecy scholars are going to tell you differently. They're going to tell you that this is happening now, but it's not. Okay, it's not going to happen now, and you'll see why it's not going to happen now. So, what prophecy is next to occur? The end of the 400-year captivity of the true Hebrew Israelites and their exodus to the wilderness of the people, which we believe to be Africa, is what's about to occur. And after the rebels are dealt with by the Most High in the wilderness, we will go into the city of Jerusalem. So after we're in the wilderness for a while, God deals with us in the wilderness like he did our ancestors. The rebels will not be able to enter the land. Okay, so immediately before our exodus, Babylon, also known as the United States, will be destroyed by Russia, China, Iran, and her allies. This is what Tao believes. Now, some of you may have your own uh, idea of, you know, eschatology, but this is what we see. And, and if you follow our end time teachings, you will understand why we believe the way we do. So the upcoming sequence of, the, of events as we see them. Increased persecution of the true Hebrews in the United States. War between Russia, China, Iran, U.S. and their allies. America would be betrayed by the European Union. Fake Israel destroyed by the four carpenters. Martial law in the U.S. Hebrew Israelites flee the U.S. The other Hebrew Israelites sent into captivity return with us to Africa. Purge rebels in wilderness and return to Jerusalem. So I put a few chapters and verses here so that you can go and see the scriptures that deals with these items and you will be able to understand why we believe what we believe so if you want a deep understanding of these prophecies please watch our other end time videos although we will cover some here it will not be in depth also look up the verses listed above
Okay, if you want to understand why we believe what we, what we believe in the sequence of events, look at those scriptures. Now, those scriptures aren't all inclusive. That's not every scripture dealing with these items or these 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 particular uh, prophecies, but they're a starting point. And it, you know, it, you should go watch our videos if if you want to know more, right? If you don't want to know more, then don't go look at it. And um, you know, it, it it's all good. Revelation 13. Everyone knows the prophecies within Revelation chapter 13. It talks about the rise of a beast system that controls the world. This system is to be controlled by a man called the first beast and by the second beast, many called the false prophet. With the signs we see today, with the rise of the chip implant technology and people actually getting implanted with the chip, and the talk about a third temple and the implementation of the Noahide laws, we would expect things to happen just as we've heard in the Left Behind series by Tim LaHaye. However, it is our it is our tail opinion, our opinion at tail, that it will not happen this way. No pre-trib rapture and no soon rise of the Antichrist. We believe the Antichrist will arise sometime during our sojourn in the real Jerusalem after we have returned from captivity worldwide. And like I mentioned before, family. The only way to truly understand this is you have to go back from the very beginning and read our prophecy teachings and see why the rebuilt temple is not about to happen and why the Noahide laws are not going to be implemented. I'm not saying they're not trying because they are, but it's not going to happen. So let's try to prove our case about the prophecy sequence. There are several things that we know. We know that the 400 year captivity mentioned in Genesis 15, 13 to 16 must come to an end if we truly are the people who have been enslaved around the world for 400 years. And he said unto Abram, Know for a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. So one of the interesting things here uh, we need to take note of is that they will be strangers in a land that's not theirs. Now, this cannot be ancient Egypt because they were captives in Goshen, which is part of the territory given to Israel by God. So this is why we believe that the Most High even mentioned that they would, you know, that they would be strangers in a land that's not theirs. Because when they were in Egypt, that was their land. That part of Egypt that they sojourn in is part of what God gave to, to Jacob. Okay, so that territory is there. So that this lets you know that this was for a future prophecy and not for the ancient Egyptian captivity. So the Gog Magog sequence. We know that Ezekiel 38 is the Gog Magog War and that the Gog Magog War is Armageddon. If it is Armageddon, we see in Ezekiel 38 that those who were held captive around the world as slaves have returned before the invasion by Gog occurs. You must watch our other videos for the proof of this if, if you don't understand. So Ezekiel 38 verses 8 through 9 states, After many days you will be called to arms. In future years you will invade a land that has recovered from war whose people were gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They had been brought out from the nations, and now all of them live in safety. You and all your troops and the many nations with you will go up, advancing like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land. So, we've covered this in my Ezekiel 38 video, how that the people who are in the land right now are the ones who were who returned from around the world as slaves right and you can get that from the other scriptures that clearly tell you that Israel was held captive as slaves around the world okay so these people were brought out of the nations and I show you in Ezekiel 38 that the reason why they come against us is for the gold and the silver and the goods you will see that in Ezekiel 38 video okay so their purpose was to steal from us okay so understand 
that we must be in the land before Armageddon. We must be in the land before the Ezekiel 38 God may God war. So if we must be in the land before then, and we're not in the land now, then the temple cannot be rebuilt now. These people who are in Israel right now will not rebuild the temple. It is all a lie. It is all smoke. It is all shadows. And modern Christendom will not pay note because they refuse to accept who we are. That we are the children of the Most High Yah. That we are the true children of Yah. We are the true Hebrew Israelites. So the key that ties Revelation 13 to after we enter the Holy Land. We know that Ezekiel 38 happens after we return from around the world from the lands of our captivity. However, there is a key in Revelation 19 and Ezekiel 39 that ties the reign of the Antichrist to some time during our sojourning back in Jerusalem. What key is that you may ask? Father Yah's Great Supper. In Revelation 19 and Ezekiel 39, we have the great supper of God Almighty, where the birds come down to feast on the dead at the battle of Gog and Magog, or the Armageddon War. Revelation 19, verses 17 through 18, And I saw an angel standing in the sun, who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in midair, Come, gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and the mighty, of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, great and small. So family, now compare Revelation 19, 17, 18 to Ezekiel 39, 17, and 20. Son of man, this is what the sovereign law says. Call out to every kind of bird and all the wild animals. Assemble and come together from all around to the sacrifice I am preparing for you. The great sacrifice on the mountains of Israel. There you will eat the flesh and drink blood. You will eat the flesh of mighty men, drink the blood of princes of the earth, as if they were rams and lambs, goats and bulls, all of them fattened animals from Bashan. At the sacrifice I am preparing for you, you will eat fat till you are glutton and drink blood until you are drunk. At my table you will at my table you will eat your fill of horses and riders. So this last part is caught off on the, on the video, family. Uh, mighty men and soldiers of every kind, declares the Lord. So we see this is the exact same event. Okay, we see that they eat their fill of horses and riders. Mighty men. Okay, Revelation says kings and generals. Okay, so this is the same event. So since we know that this is the same event, right? And we know what happens in the book of Revelation, Revelation 19. We can sort of time... Uh, the 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 rebuilding of the temple and we know the rebuilding of the temple has to be somewhere within the time frame that israel was returned back to the land according to ezekiel 38. so in revelation 19 19 to 21 listed below all right we see that the antichrist is at the great supper of god and is killed there therefore because we know that the true hebrew israelites must be back in the land first before the battle of Armageddon, or Gog and Magog war, then the Antichrist rule and implementation of the mark of the beast has to be during this time period and cannot happen today. We are not currently in the land without bars or gates. So, Revelation 19 states, Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, who had performed the signs on its behalf. With these signs, he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive in the lake of fiery, in the fiery lake of burning fire. I mean, burning sulfur. The rest were killed with the sword coming out of the mouth of the rider on the horse, and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. So here we got the time. The Antichrist is killed in Revelation 19 and he's consumed along with the kings and the princes and the horses and their riders, right? By these birds that we saw, okay? And these birds exist both in, in Ezekiel 39 and in Revelation 19, which tells us it's the same event, which tells us that the God made God war and the battle of Armageddon in Revelation 19 is the same event. 
and therefore the most high is coming back to kill the antichrist and the false prophet so we see that the antichrist and false prophet are there during this time frame right during the time of the great supper of god which is all of this happens after we have already gone back from captivity from around the world back into the land right so if that's the case then the temple had to be built sometime during the time we occupied the land so when is the third temple rebuilt the third temple is rebuilt after we have been back in the land for a while it occurs after the gentiles help us rebuild our cities isaiah 60. the third temple will be rebuilt before the ezekiel 38 war of Armageddon. zechariah chapter 1 verses 14 and 17. then the angel who was speaking to me said proclaim this word this is what the lord almighty says i am very jealous for jerusalem and zion and i am very angry with the nation that feels secure i was only a little angry but they went too far with the punishment therefore this is what the lord says i will return to jerusalem with mercy and there my house will be rebuilt and the measuring line will be stretched out over jerusalem declares the lord almighty proclaim further this is what the lord almighty says my towns will again overflow with prosperity and the lord will again comfort zion and choose jerusalem so what we see here family that the house of the lord will be rebuilt and the most high say look yes i sent my people into captivity but the gentiles went too far which is why the gentiles will be judged the other thing we see here and you know you can almost pass that over is that and the measuring line will be stretched out over jerusalem what measuring line it's the measuring of the temple because that's why the most high says right there that and there my house will be rebuilt what house the temple and then it said and the measuring line will be stretched out over jerusalem what measuring line it's the measuring the width and, and the length and all of that of jerusalem and leave out the outer court that whole thing so the temple will be rebuilt once we are back in the land zechariah 116 not before after the temple has been rebuilt and we have been in the land for a long time then the antichrist will arise and decide to invade jerusalem again and i say again because it's still sort of that roman empire that's still in control so in conclusion Many will ask, where does the abomination of desolation fit in? They may also ask, how does Zechariah 14.2 fit in? Go look up those scriptures dealing with that family. Those who have been following our teachings and understand this particular teaching will be able to figure out when these events occur. However, for those still struggling with this, I will do another teaching on these questions and on the battle of Armageddon itself. So family, if you can pinpoint the timing of the rebuilding of the temple, okay and that it coincides with after we are back in the land as a people right then you can determine when the antichrist is going to come then you can determine a lot of things okay so i hope i made this clear i'm not sure if it was clear enough to you um because you really have to go back and look at the other teachings so yes family they're they're making a big stink you know you watch all of the gentile prophecy scholars and they say oh chabad is about to rebuild the jewish temple in jerusalem oh the antichrist is about to arise oh they're about to implement the noahide laws yes they're trying to do it but you got to ask yourself the question family why now why all of this happening now just like all other stuff why you see all these things happening now because they know it's the prophesied return of the true children of god that we are going to be returning from all the nations we were we went into slavery they know this so they're trying to usurp prophecy they're trying to maintain the lie that they are the chosen people of yah and so they're moving on fast forward and they're trying to rebuild the temple and they're trying to to um, implement these Noahide laws, but it's not going to work the way they expect. According to the scriptures, it's not going to work the way they expect. Now, they will implement this 
sometime in the future, and they're going to take half of Jerusalem captive again. Okay, one after we're back in the land, and I'll show you that. But we must understand. But you know, when that occurs, that's when the Most High comes back. That's when He kills the Antichrist. When He kills the false prophet. Okay. And I know you're not getting this anywhere else, and nobody else is teaching this. But nobody else spends the time researching and praying about this like we do. And personally, you know, uh, we've been teaching about end time prophecy for a long time. And many of you may not know us, uh, knew, knew us back in the day, but we've been teaching about this for a long time. And so uh, you must understand that very few people are called to teach. And definitely very few people are called to teach about end time prophecy. Okay, so I believe that is my call. Okay, and you know, I'm not bragging on myself. I'm just saying I know what my calling is, and that's to be a teacher. Okay, so uh, so support us. Uh, you know, go to patreoncom tail if you want to support us. If you like what we're doing, you like to see us continue. You know, we don't. We're not getting enough support, family. You know, because there's a lot of things I told you that we really want to do. And uh, we really want to connect with the people in Africa. We want to be able to go there. We want to, you know, there's things we haven't even talked about that we really would like to do. And we think it would be a blessing to the, to the family both here and abroad. And, uh, but we can't do that without your help. Okay, so you must understand, family, that, you know, uh, you know, don't muzzle the ox that tread the press. You know, I mean, that, that's scripture. Not trying to twist it. And as God leaves you freely give. You know, that's our whole thing. If God leaves you to give, then give. If he doesn't, then don't. And, you know, we we, we, we don't want you to give if you don't want to give. Okay, we don't want it. If God don't put on your heart to support us, we don't want it. All right? And all you people who come over here and say, well, Teo asking for money. No, Teo needs to be able to do these things. Because we have families, too. We have bills, too. We have things we got we could be doing to take care of our families instead of doing all these teachings. But we know we're called. We know that the Most High wants us to do this, and so we're going to do it. Now it's up to you whether or not you want to help support. That's all. Uh, you know, please don't send me no 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 texts and no messages or email about this stuff, right? Because you're going to say, oh well, why why don't you trust in the Most High? I am trusting, and that's why I'm coming to His people, <laughs> right? That's my family. Right? All of you all are my family. I'm talking about Israel. And even some of the Gentiles who are born again. Right? Y'all family. You know? So, you know, and some people disagree with that. That's fine. All right? But bottom line is, we're doing this because we love the Most High. Don't send me no crazy emails. Love you with the love of the Messiah. Peace and blessings, Israel. Your captivity is coming to an end.